Hello yogis, I hope you're all well, well in mind, body, and spirit today. This short practice will take us through some postures that are really good for releasing tension in the hips. So if you have a couple of blocks, great, but you don't have to have them. If you have a blanket to sit on at the beginning of our practice and to cover with at the end of our practice, great. But again, you don't have to have that. So as we prepare to get familiar with some of these postures for the hips, let's start by taking a comfortable opening posture. So whatever that is for you, it might be lying down, it might be a seated posture, whatever would feel good to you. Take that position, take that posture, and when you're ready, let your eyelids softly close. Relax the jaw. Let the awareness drop down into your body. Let the crown of the head lift just a little bit. And then feel the weight of the bones of your legs and your hips. See if you can bring your awareness down to the bones that make up the hip complex. Pull the abdomen in gently. And then bring your hands palm to palm in Anjali Mudra in front of your lifted heart. Take a moment to set your intention for your practice today. As we go through these postures, what is it? you would like to shine the light of your awareness on. Acknowledge that to yourself and repeat it to yourself. And then let the hands come down. Take a nice deep cleansing breath. And softly open your eyes. If you've been seated on a blanket or covered with one, you can just Put the blanket to the side. We're going to start on all fours for cat and cow. Hands under shoulders, knees under hips, turn the toes under, opening up the soles of the feet. As you inhale, lift the tip of the tailbone, lift the collarbones, lift the crown of the head. As you exhale, tailbone turns down, spine rounds, chin tucks. Go back and forth in these two postures. So we're going to let the posture begin each time at the tailbone and then up the back of the hips and up the spine. And then we round in, getting flexibility in the spine and also some nice easeful movement in the hips. Take one more round, sweeping the collarbones up in cow pose, and then curling in a bit on cat. And then I'd like you to take your knees to touch, the inner edges of your feet to touch. Sit back at your hips, palms open to the sky, relax the shoulders, and then begin lifting the hips till you feel a nice little traction in the spine and release back down. Come on up. Place your hands in your back pockets. Turn your toes under here and separate the knees. Let the shoulders and the elbows work back towards each other and lift the heart. Engage these muscles because we really want to bring the energy up and then hold the low back and then a nice sweet little stretch in the solar plexus, a revealing of the heart, letting the throat open, letting the head roll back. As you exhale, hips to, uh, to heels, hips to heels, stretching the soles of the feet. And then come on up. 
And when you're ready, come around, hands under your shoulders again. So you'll be oriented differently on your mat. But for the sake of this video, I'm coming off the mat a bit. You're going to take your left foot out like a kickstand up in alignment with your hands and sweep the left arm up. Let the head roll back, lifting and opening up. As you exhale, hand comes down. And now work the hands out in front of you, just like you would be doing down dog. You're going to let the head hang. Now, we're going to keep that right hip over the knee, but we're going to isometrically pull back, pull the tailbone back, and you can peel your armpits out to the sides as you drop your heart towards the earth. You may even end up putting your head down. And then come back up. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Hips are over knees, shoulders over hands. Right foot out, get it lined up with the hands or something close to that. Lift the right arm up, and here's where we stretch big, letting the head roll back. Just take this posture in a way that feels appropriate for your body. Exhale, hand comes down. And you're gonna walk your hands way out in front, letting the head hang. Left hip is over left knee. Now let the tailbone stretch back a little bit like it's partly made of silly putty. Spread the armpits out to the sides. Maybe the head goes all the way down to the floor. And then release back up. Come on up, yogis. Come into plank posture. Get nice and long here, a little bit of working the knee joint, stretching the Achilles, and come back to stillness and plank. Knees can be up or down, but you're gonna inhale, and then exhale to lower. Inhale, sweep up, Bhujangasana, Cobra Pose. Lift, lengthen, and then push your 10 fingertips in. Hug the elbows in. Pull back isometrically. You'll feel a little stretch at the hip flexors. And then, child's pose. Sink back. Once more, hips towards heels. If it's too much bend in the knee, you can always lift your hips up a little bit. Now, come up onto fingertips here, yogis. Fingertips. So the palms are lifted off the mat and spread the um, underarms out to the sides once more. And then come on up. Now, if you would like to pad, we're gonna do some lunging. So if you'd like to pad for your knees, you could grab your blanket or a towel or a, a kind of a, a pillow that isn't very uh, full, a flattish pillow. Something to make sure the back knee always feels supported. If you don't need that, that's fine. You don't have to use it. I'm going to step the left foot out and make sure the step is kind of a big step because we're going to want to move the hips forward here. Inhale, lift. And exhale, drop the hips. Inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, peel the arms and hands out to the sides. Go nice and slow. You could even roll your shoulders here. The idea is that you're dropping the hips down, spinning the arm bones, lifting and opening. And come on out of the pose. Go gently, go slowly. Let the body really feel what's happening. Now we're going to step the right foot way out. We want to give a lot of room for the hips to move here. Inhale, lift, and exhale, drop the hips. Lift, lengthen, open. Inhale, lift, and open the heart. Exhale, palms spin out to the sides. So you lower your arms, head rolls back. And release again. So, so good to move slowly, not rushing anything. 
Now, you may want a block or two. So if you happen to have one, great. You might end up using them, make sure they're handy. And if you don't have them, that's fine. We're gonna step the left foot out again. This time, curl the toes of the back foot under. Inhale, lift. Exhale, swing both hands inside the front foot and pick the back knee up. Now here's where you may want some blocks. We're gonna bend the elbows. We might have elbows on two blocks. If that's too intense, go back to palms on the floor. We might do elbows or forearms to a single block. Or you could always do forearms down to the floor. Oftentimes people find turning the toes out here is, uh, feels very good. So just explore toes forward, slope toes out, and then look out over the fronts of your fingertips a foot or two. Make sure the back leg feels nice and stretchy by pressing the back heel a little bit towards the back. Doesn't have to be a big movement at all. Your heart is lifted. Your spine is feeling long here. And then you're gonna set the back knee down and come on up. Again, you might want blocks if they're available to you. We're gonna come into runner's lunge. So you're gonna bring this right hip over the right knee, trying to keep it there. Left foot out, toes point up. You can have bricks or not, but we're gonna lift and open the heart and then roll down, but try to keep the gaze forward so the head doesn't hang, okay? Keep the heart working towards the knee. Maybe your blocks are useful to you as you walk out, or maybe you'd rather have hands on the floor, pardon me, the mat, up to you, whatever feels good. Couple variations here. One is hand can come over the foot and give a little tug. For some of us, that's too intense. We, so we just keep the hands down. The other thing is you could always add a twist. So you're gonna, when you twist over to the side, you might feel a nice tug between the hip and the bottom rib cage. Either way, any way, all are good variations. Take a nice deep cleansing breath here. And then you're gonna come on in. And here we go. Same postures on the other side, so bricks are handy if you'd like to use them. Don't be surprised if one side feels a lot different than the other. Inhale, lift. And exhale, swing down. Hands inside the foot. Back toes are turned under, and then you're gonna lift the knee. Again, foot can be forward, foot can be out to the side of it. The idea is that you begin bending your elbows, just noticing two bricks, one brick, no bricks, or the floor, whatever works for your body. So each of us has slight variations on thigh bones and hip complex and all of that. So each person's posture is going to look a little bit different. Look out over your front fingertips so the head doesn't hang. Stretch that left heel back ever so gently so the abdominal wall is up, the heart is open. Take a nice deep breath. And then you can set your back knee down as you walk yourself in. Coming back to runner's lunge on the other side. So remember, we're gonna let the left hip go over the left knee and keep it there. Bricks might be nice for the hands, but you don't have to have them. Inhale and exhale, begin lowering your spine. Again, not the head, but just letting the upper body come low towards this knee. If you feel like it, cup your uh, top of your foot and toes, give a sweet little tug to open things up there. Tendons, ligaments, also energy meridians. And then come on over if you'd like, giving that little tug between the hip and the bottom rib. If it's too intense, don't stick with it, right? Yoga is not about making demands of our body. It's just all about noticing. And then come on in. 
from here, we're going to come in to pigeon pose. And I'd like to give you a bit of cueing so that you can come into pigeon pose and get the most out of it as you begin noticing and noticing what feels like too little, too much, or just right. So what I'd like you to do is take your left foot forward and then you're going to take your knee and you're going to bring your knee to the edge of your yoga mat. And that might cause your heel to come in towards you a little bit and that's fine. And you'll notice as I put my knee um, over here by my imaginary edge of my yoga mat, my whole body kind of went that way. So I'm going to bring myself back to center and I'm going to inchworm my back foot straight behind me, straight, straight, straight. And then I can lift and open the heart. You could have your hands down the floor, on your forward leg, anywhere you'd like. I like to put my hands behind and interlace and lift the heart this way, letting the head roll back. After you've had one, two, or three breaths here with the heart open, you're gonna lower down. And you could be walking yourself out with your hands. You don't have to go down this way. You could be, uh, do something a little more supportive. Release the hands, walk them out. Maybe take um, the palms to touch. Make any little micro movements. Relax the jaw. And then you're going to walk your hands in as you lift your head. Keep this foot and leg where it is. Turn the back toes under. And we're going to push to come into three-legged down dog. Lifting this left leg high. Dropping the back heel. Lift, lengthen, and open. Now notice how good it feels to squeeze the muscles of that lifted leg. Clearing the knee. And then the foot comes down. We're going to do the pigeon pose on the other side. So I'm going to take my right foot forward and I'm going to tip my leg over so that my knee comes to the outside edge of my mat. I'm going to pretend my mat is right here and there's my knee at the edge of it. Walk myself to center. It, it may feel good for this foot to pull in towards me a little bit. I'm going to inch from my back foot back a lot and then take a posture that lifts and opens the heart. Could be this, could be hands on the legs, could be interlacing behind. After one, two or three breaths, you lower. Come down to your mat with your forehead and maybe Arms will come out and palms will touch together. And you'll take a couple of breaths, letting yourself notice. Notice what feels good to your body. And then walk in, turn your toes under back there. Get ready for three-legged down dog. Press down to rise up. Lift, lengthen, and open. Squeeze the muscles of your lifted leg to clear the knee. And then the leg comes down. Put the knees down. Walk your knees up towards your wrists, cross at your ankles, and come on over to seated. Take your right ankle over towards your left hip. Step your left foot across. And then push down with your 10 fingertips and sit down. Hug your knee with your left arm. Swing your right arm around behind your waist. Lift up nice and high through the crown of the head. Swivel the chin a bit towards the back shoulder. Close your eyes here and feel your abdominal wall pull in. And then imagine that your spine moves deeper towards the center of your core. Notice how the energy just bubbles right up the meridians, lifting and opening you. And release, go nice and slow. Other side, heel to hip, 
foot steps across. Hug your knee with your opposite arm. Other arm goes around behind you. You're gonna lift up through the crown of the head, turn your chin towards your back shoulder. Let the energy lift up the spine. Now pull the abdominal wall in, shift the spine deeper into the core. Let the energy rise. And unwind. Press your feet out in front of you. Dandasana. Hands down, shoulders roll back. Abdomen pulls in. Lift and open the heart. and then lift the arms. As you exhale, keep the belly button pulled in and lower. Hands can come to knees, shins, ankles, feet, whatever feels good. You're gonna press the heels forward as you dip down. If you like the feeling of hanging the head, you can do that. I would encourage most of us to look forward. It's very good for the neck. We tend to be looking down a lot these days at phones and tablets. So lifting the head is actually a nice little counter pose to all of that. And release. Good. Come on down. Lie down on your back. Now you're going to let the left leg come up nice and high and wrap the right leg around it like a snake around a branch. You're going to Glue your legs together so that they don't slip and slide and place this left foot on the earth. Lift and open your arms like a cactus. And then you're simply gonna let the knees fall to the left, but keep the right shoulder blade down. And come back to center. Make any little adjustments needed. Lift the right leg high. Left leg wraps around. Glue your legs so they're stuck together. Put the right foot down. Knees swing to the right. Undo the wrap of the legs. Now put the right ankle atop the left knee, interlace behind the left thigh bone. Press with your elbow, press the right leg away, pull the left leg in, gently flex both feet. And then once you have that pulling in and pushing away action going, you're gonna tip one or two inches to the left and keep doing that, that pull in, push away. center. Put the left foot down. Keep the ankle glued on the knee. Open the arms once more and pivot that right foot down to the earth. Come back to center. Give a full body stretch here. Legs come down. Arms lift up. And then come back down with the arms, bend the knees. This time we're going to put the left ankle, glue it on the right knee, lift up, interlace your fingers behind your right leg, flex your ankles gently, pull in, and left elbow pushes away. So pulling in, pushing away, all at the same time. Move one or two inches to the right, but keep the pulling in and the pushing away. And come back to center. Put the right foot down, open the arms, swivel your hips over towards the right, shoulder blades stay down.
again, full body stretch here. Full body stretch. Bring the arms down. Lift the feet for happy baby. Hold the outer edges of your feet and then just give a gentle, gentle rocking motion. Sometimes it feels good to, as you exhale in this posture, pull the knees down a little bit. But only do that if that's okay feeling in your knees. And release your feet down. Touch your knees together and walk your feet to the edges of your mat or towards the edges. Open up the arms comfortably. You might feel a sweet little tug at your outer hips here. And then you're gonna walk your feet back in for stability. You're gonna reach for your blocks or one block if you have it. If you don't have a block, that's fine. You can do a full body stretch without it. Otherwise, take the legs down, lift the arms up, and maybe interlace your hands and pivot your palms towards the back. Take another deep cleansing breath here. And then arms come down, knees bend, legs lift. We're getting ready for this, our final posture before Shavasana. So as always, stay in this legs up posture just as long as you would like to, knowing that when you've had enough, you're simply going to lower your feet back down to the floor, remove your brick, and lie down and rest on your mat, letting your hips just absorb all the yoga you just did. So stay here just as long as you would like, and then take yourself into Shavasana, maybe cover with a blanket if you'd like, maybe rock your head once or twice side to side to find the perfect place for your head to rest. And as you work your way into Shavasana, I'm going to play this bowl, and I'll give a few rings of the bowl for the second chakra. So the second chakra is located in front of the sacrum, and that's the chakra that probably got a lot of cleansing just now when you were doing all that hip work. So stay comfortable and stay in Shavasana just as long as you would like today. Thank you, yogis. It is an honor to share a yoga practice with you. The light in me shines on and honors the beautiful light in you. Namaste.